Hello, my name is Nicole, and thank you so much for taking the time out to listen. Today I titled this message on losing respect for others, on losing respect for others. And for some of you all, you will take this message and you will contemplate on some things that you've been thinking and saying concerning a person or a group. And others, you will take this message and you just might disagree with everything that I'm about to say. But I will tell you that when one loses respect for you or you lose respect for others, it is definitely a game changer and you are never quite the same. The relationship is not the same. And you start to think about other people and other things that you have done with or without these people because they do challenge you. When, I, when you lose respect for someone, nine times out of ten, something they said or did challenged you. And then you have to reevaluate, hmm, maybe I'm not uh, keeping company with the right folks. So let me start off by giving you an example. Let's say that you are going out with someone and everything is great. You are enjoying the atmosphere. You like the conversation until something happens and you look at that incident as if it's no big deal. Let's say a waiter drops a glass and it happens to be your date's glass and you look at it as no big deal. Accidents happen, but you see from your date's expression that they are very irritated, very upset about it, and they're trying very hard to stay positive. And every time the waiter comes by, they're giving them an ugly look. Every time you mention anything to them, and it doesn't have to be about the incident, they seem to be a bit irritated and you know it's all tied to that simple accident. For some people, they will not let go of minor offenses and that is a clear indication that that person is easily offended, might be a bit temperamental and lo and behold, if you would have made the error, how would they have responded to you? Maybe initially, they would appear to be okay and all right, but just imagine being with that person for months, for years even. We overlook the signs early on when we are dealing with people, whether it is on an intimate level or if we are just dealing with them in business. We overlook the signs that say that this person is not one who is going to respect others, much less respect themselves. We overlook the signs where a person can be quite difficult and sometimes we will dismiss minor things, at least that's what we think, which is really major in their world. And so when things are major, if you are one who doesn't take too kindly to some things that people do and you tend to be sensitive, you will lose your respect quite easily than that person who isn't so sensitive. Some people, they are very quick to judge others to the point where they don't want to have any type of connection with them after even the first meeting. Or for some people, they'll come on this page, listen for about five or 10 minutes, and then they are gone. Some people just cannot overlook things that they feel come across as disrespectful, arrogant, mean, or what have you. And meanwhile, others are saying that's not what this person means or that's not how this person is really coming across or maybe you have some unresolved issues from the past and this is why you feel the way you do. Some people are not going to do any type of inner work. They're not going to self-evaluate. They're not going to analyze why they act the way they act, why they do what they do. And so some will just right away deem everyone as being disrespectful, even over the minor issues, minor things. So are you that one? Let's start off with you before we start going down that path with everyone else. Are you that one that is easily offended? Are you that one that the minute somebody says something and their tone is a little bit off putting to you that you're looking at it as disrespectful? Are you the type of individual that's trying to control other people's emotions by telling them that you shouldn't feel this way? Or 
you are telling them that this is the way you feel, even though they are saying something different? Do you tend to be that one that talks down to people? Have you been accused of talking down to people? Have you been rude where you walk away when a person is talking? Are you the type of person that ignores people when they come with a grievance, especially if it's about you? Do you tend to curse a lot and call people names whenever you are upset? Do you have a way about you that people have accused you of being quite disrespectful? Okay. If you have answered yes to any of these questions or most of them, then it's safe to say that before you talk about some others acting disrespectful towards you, you might want to check yourself and work each and every day to try not to be disrespectful toward others. Meaning that you don't want to ignore, you don't want to name call, you don't want to blame, you don't want to try to control, you don't want to power trip. You just want to be the type of individual that is striving to do what is right. For the Christian, you are tr striving to be Christ-like. Now, let's talk about those other folks. Let's talk about the folks that you give chance after chance. Uh, when it comes to their behavior, you're saying to yourself, I would love to really uh, do more things with this individual. I would like to share more with them. I would really like to treat this person without being so guarded, but I just can't seem to do it because of past disrespect. OK, and this could be a teenager. This could be um, an adult. This could be someone who is older that you've known for many years. But the point is, is that you feel some kind of way, which is usually negative around this individual, because you are concerned that he or she once again is going to be disrespectful. OK, now for some of you all, you don't have that issue. So you're just listening to this message out of curiosity. But you might be that one that has to advise someone someday about this business of respect, okay, and being disrespectful or being the victim of disrespect. And so you want to always listen and um, encourage them and not definitely compare yourself to them as if you are so holy and so righteous and so much better than others because we have all and I will put my hand up we have all disrespected uh, people at some point okay and we may not have looked at it as disrespect but they did let's take a look at what it means to respect individuals okay and I am going into the Webster's dictionary and you can pull out whatever dictionary you would like respect is to consider worthy of high regard, esteem, to refrain from interfering with, to have reference to, okay? Respectability is the quality or state of being respectable. Respectable is used as an adjective, and that is worthy of respect, uh, estimable, decent or correct in character or behavior, proper Fair in size or quantity, moderately good, tolerable. Okay. Respectful, used as an adjective, is marked by or showing respect. Okay. So I am showing an individual that I respect his or her opinion, even though I disagree with it. That means I'm not name calling, I'm not judging, I'm not blaming, and I'm not trying to find systematic ways to pay him or her back for insulting me with their opinion. OK, now an individual who may be quite sensitive to any disagreement, to anything that is unfavorable or pessimistic or what have you might take an incident and look at it as disrespectful. But how is it disrespectful if a person is simply disagreeing with you? OK, it's disrespectful if the person is behaving in an ugly way and is demeaning you in some way, insulting you. But if I'm just stating that I disagree with you, that doesn't make me disrespectful. Even if I'm quite passionate in explaining how I feel, it still doesn't mean that I'm being disrespectful because we can't always shut off our emotions when we are talking, right? And so you may be talking to someone and you're quite passionate and then you're falsely accused of being disrespectful. The teenager who's upset, who's had a long day at school, comes in the house, doesn't want to speak and just goes straight up the stairs. OK, 
That's the time just to give that teenager some space, and then you might want to come to their room later and say, what's wrong? I noticed that typically you come in the house and you speak, but today you seem like you're going through something. Would you like to talk about it? Not, oh, what's up with you? Why are you coming up in here with this attitude? You want me to hurt you? You don't come up in here like this. You don't say uh, you don't uh, uh, ignore me. You don't walk by me with this funky attitude. You see, all of that does nothing more than cause divisiveness. And some of you parents have not talked like that, but you have said things in such a way where you pushed your child away rather than drew him or her near. OK. And so who's being disrespectful? OK, the yelling, the cursing, all because a person is quiet and they're going through something and they really don't even want to talk because what m might come out of their mouth is disrespectful. And sometimes we're guarded like that. All of us. I want to say something, but you know what? The only thing that I'm thinking about right now is saying something negative. So I'm just quiet. Doesn't mean I'm being disrespectful. It's just I'm being real careful what I say because I know that <laughs> if I say what's on my mind, it's going to cut somebody deeply, especially when you know their little secrets and you know some intimate things about them. You know how to get them right where it hurts. That's why a lot of times people are quiet. They're just quiet, not being disrespectful, just listening, listening, not trying to hurt you. Okay. We got to remember that sort of thing, especially when we are um, in uh, households where sometimes it's a bit um, intense because of all of the things that people are into and what they're going through. And sometimes what we're going through. OK, it's always better to be quiet. Um, but the other thing, though, is that well, what happens when you got that person who is sitting up there and all they know how to do is I roll deep sigh. Anything you say, anything you do is taken out of context. It's almost like they're looking for a fight because they have lost respect for you. OK, now that's usually why they behave that way, because they lost respect. And if they feel like a mouse that can't get out of a trap, right, whether it's a marriage or some type of business that you two have together or work, they have to release their negativity that they've experienced with you in such a way where it comes off where they are attacking you with the eye rolls, the deep sides, the ignoring, the deep, you know, the, the walking away and all that other stuff. And all you can say basically is, I'm sorry that you feel this way. Um, we can end this contract. We don't have to continue to work together. Always give these sorts of people a way out after you've already tried to work with them and you've apologized and you've bent over backwards for them. It's just always best to give them a way out. OK, because it's quite obvious that some people are immature, they're petty and they just don't want to grow up and they don't want to look past all of their uh, issues with others. OK, some people will hold uh, grievances against others for many, many years, and they think they're justified in doing that. And they're not. All they're doing is losing friends. OK, and winning enemies, because if I know that this person is carrying something against me, I'm not going to treat them like a friend. I'm going to be standoffish. I'm not going to trust them. I'm not going to put uh, my heart and soul, so to speak, in a relationship, which you shouldn't do that anyway. The Lord tells us even in the Bible to guard our hearts. You see, we're not even supposed to be putting our emotions out there on a the table like that. OK, some things we got to keep for ourselves. That's why some people can take advantage. But that's a whole nother topic. Now, disrespect is going to do some things if you decide that you want to play that card of disrespecting them back. Number one is, is once again, you're going to lose friends you're going to win enemies. OK, the other thing is, is that when you continuously do that sort of thing, disrespect people, you're not just disrespecting that group. Eventually, it's going to trickle over into other areas of your life. People that you don't intend to disrespect, but you will eventually do it because you have grown accustomed to disrespecting others. OK, long term use. OK, long term doing something and then sooner or later you're going to end up doing it with the people who you love the most, like the most, and who could actually help you. Okay. It's very hard to contain evil. <laughs> evil has a way of spreading. 
Um, the other thing is, is that disrespect will cost you your blessings with the one true God. OK, because God will speak to you. He will convict you on how you're acting very ugly, disrespectful, nasty, what have you. Or he will convict that other one who keeps doing that to you because you've been praying. So that's the other point I need to make is that when you're dealing with people who are being consistently disrespectful or every now and again being disrespectful you should be praying okay not out loud okay but you should be praying behind closed doors lord jesus you see what this individual is doing you see how disrespectful they are okay sometimes the one who's accusing you of being disrespectful is the one who's guilty so he or she will project their issues onto you once again another situation where people are doing this sort of thing okay and you know full well that you are not being disrespectful. You could put your hand on the Bible, swear on your mama's grave or whatever else. And still that person is going to accuse you because self-righteous people, that's what they do. When they believe that they're right, come hell or high water, they are going to accuse you of things that do not describe you was not your intention was not your feeling okay they will do that you have to rise above it this one right here is just upsetting me right now this one right here is just trying to find fault with me because he or she knows that they're guilty and they don't like the fact that I'm on to them but here's the thing you do have to expose disrespect as much as you want to avoid confrontation with people you have to expose disrespect how they take it from you that doesn't matter. The point is, is that they have to be exposed on it. Otherwise, they're going to continue to do it. OK, some will do it anyway. But for those who do have a heart for you, they, they do love you. They do want you around. They will at least work, make some effort to stop being so disrespectful. OK, but you got to give them some time, of course, because people will fall back into their old habits, depending on how long you have allowed that individual to get away with their disrespect. OK, I don't recommend allowing, especially children, to disrespect you repeatedly. Uh, uh. You need to nip it in the bud as soon as they go there with you. You should be on it. Excuse me. Watch your tone with me. Am I being that way with you? No. Okay. You want respect. You have to give respect. Okay. And they'll come back at you later on when you're being disrespectful toward them. They'll say, remember when you said, and you just don't need to argue about that sort of thing because you know, you know that if you want respect, you have to give it right. Uh, some people will say, yes, you got to earn respect with me. Okay. That sounds all good. And it sounds wonderful. Love the little tough talk every now and again. But at the end of the day, are you respecting other people? If, if children, <clears throat> if children see you out there disrespecting others, disrespecting your partner and disrespecting the man or the woman who shows up to uh, provide service, re disrespecting people over the phone. It's only a matter of time that they will cross that line with you. Oh, you're disrespecting my mother. Okay, guess what? I'm going to show you what it feels like to disrespect. Okay. Or, or to show you, show, show you what it feels like when one is uh, being disrespectful. And so then they will call themselves giving somebody an example or two. Okay. And then, of course, that is going to open up a whole can of worms because now, especially those power and control types of individuals who are abusive now they're going to want to um beat somebody into submission or uh if it's not physically verbally beat them into submission you don't come over here talking to me like that blah 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 well i've been watching you disrespect my mother for a long time now and i'm tired of it and so you need to be taught a lesson since you want to go around here and teach other people a lesson with all this attitude that you're given or you're being very disrespectful to my dad. So why is it that you're sitting up here talking about I need to respect you? OK, why don't you be an example first before you come at me like this? Oh, you got some very, <laughs> very observant children. And yes, some of you all would take that and you would say, oh, that one's being disrespectful. Not when they're telling you the truth or not. If you notice the tone of my voice, it wasn't one of those voices where it was yelling and screaming and cursing going on. But there's emotion to it. There is that upset that you kind of hear with the children. But it doesn't mean that they're being disrespectful when they're calling you out on your foolishness. You see, it doesn't mean that you're being disrespectful when you're calling others out on their foolishness. There is something that's going on in the household or elsewhere and it needs to be addressed. And we don't keep pushing it, you know, under the rug. It has to be dealt with. So 
some of you all, I know how it is. It gets to be Lord Jesus. It gets to be so challenging at times to deal with people. Okay. Because you're dealing with so many different issues, but I tell you what you are trusting in the one true God through every single one of these storms. You are not trusting in men and women once again, but you're trusting in the one true God to use men and women to do what is right. Okay. Sometimes we do have to go low contact or no contact with disrespectful people who just refuse to deal with the fact that they're being that way. Sometimes we have to cut some uh, things off from those individuals who we still got to deal with. OK, but we don't have to keep going in our pockets and giving them. OK, sometimes people got to learn the hard way when you take that long vacation away from them. OK, I'm not going to continue to be disrespected like this. You need to have a little self-talk. You need to get some things together. The one who is offending you. Right. You're telling them. This sort of thing, because it's too much. Some people, they just they just thrive on being evil and mean and nasty to other people. They enjoy it. OK, that's where the mental disorder kicks in. And when you sense that that, that individual is a type that is violent, uh, that is easily offended, cursing, wishing evil on people, laughing when things um, happen that are disturbing, feeling as if people are getting paid back because um, they offended them in some kind of way. And so they kind of walk around with this pride, those type of individuals, God deals with them. They get knocked off of their little um, soapbox. Okay. Over and over again, they won't ever look at it as that while they're looking at everybody else, supposedly going through for whatever offenses, that were made against them, but they get knocked down too quickly. And sometimes some people, they get knocked down harder than we would ever get knocked down. You see, just imagine God giving some of these individuals, everything, right? Everything they all, always wanted, they prayed for, and then they get on that high and mighty trip. And then God ends up knocking them down. They end up getting everything taken away. Okay. So that happens because God is only going to deal with, that pride and nastiness and disrespect for so long. Some people are even that way with him in their prayers. They're cussing and fussing and talking about God. You don't do this. And God, well, it's about time you finally gave me something. God is not required to give us anything. Okay. He gave us life and then he'll give us death. So you got to walk softly Sometimes with God and, and we got some individuals that they're disrespectful behind closed doors or in the public when it comes to spirituality and God and faith. And they're disrespectful toward the people of God who's only trying to supply them with wisdom and instruction. It's just a whole lot of disrespect all across the board. And then they wonder why suddenly they're the victims. And you might be wondering, too. Well, Connect the dots. Did you say some things that were quite offensive or did some things, whether to somebody's face or behind their back that, you know, is working for the Lord? Well, confess in and repent that way you won't carry the guilt or the worry about it. OK, but there just might be some consequences. You just might lose another friend because of that. You might lose another family member because of that. OK, people can see. People can hear and they know when somebody's being disrespectful over and over again and they get tired of it. So that is it. Blessings to you. Please do check the description box for anything that might be of interest. You've been listening to one of the newer podcasts that I am on. And for those of you all who still miss me over there at YouTube in Enterprise 7, uh, understand that it is a paid channel. But that doesn't mean that you're missing out on anything uh, because I'm on other sites as well. OK, so continue to uh, just stay focused and trust in the one true God. Blessings to you.